Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet. Um, there was kind of a lag in the thing going on. Was it just for me? I don't know if, if um, I think it, it, it. I think it was delivered quite well. I hope technically everything looks and sounds okay. Hell, hello, everybody. How is it going? This is Apostate Prophet. Hello, David Wood. How are you doing? Yo, yo, yo! Just, uh, just uh, sharing this live stream with everybody. Oh, that's good. Because I am on, uh, I am on, uh, I'm on two platforms, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. I see. <laughs> so D, D Wood is on YouTube and on Twitter. Oh, I'm on yeah. the Twitter and the YouTube. The Twitter. You got back to Twitter. There was a time where you wanted to have nothing to do with Twitter because oh, well, Twitter was crazy bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they were bad with the with the stupid censorship. Like, I mean, if if if, if I ever actually break a rule, hey take me out take me out uh but it was it's it never anything i've actually done it's always like some crazy insane interpretation of something i've done so there was that that uh and all i had to do was take down a tweet right and i'm like i'm not taking down anything screw you uh, i don't want to be on your platform anymore but then once you're off twitter for a while you realize gosh what a waste of time that whole thing was uh but then i only i only got back on because it was the only way to contact <laughs> it's funny that the only way to contact youtube for a while was on twitter to contact yeah. team youtube when they screwed up so i only got back on to say hey you guys just took down my video over here uh, which now i actually have their i actually have their email they after after raising such a ruckus on twitter they like sent me uh, an email saying okay contact is here this contact is here <laughs> <laughs> that's that's ridiculous yeah well the last time they banned me they banned me because i uh shared a link in which i was explaining why i ripped up the quran and that was yeah, shame on you ridiculous man <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Taliban is fine on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Go out and actually literally kill people, massacre people. Yeah. Oh, it's fine. I mean, you have a you, you, you know, know it's, you're you supposed to have a platform there, but if you rip up the Quran, that whoa. Yeah, you know, it's hilarious. Like the the like the government of China, which is committing genocide against Uyghurs, they're fine on Twitter. But the one of the dudes from the Babylon V, when the Babylon V got suspended, he tweeted out um well maybe if i uh maybe if i do genocide against some uyghurs they'll they'll let me back i mean they'll they'll, they'll give us our, uh, our our channel back and they banned him for calling for genocide <laughs> it's like wait a minute the people actually doing the genocide are fine but if i if i make a joke saying oh i guess i guess i should do what they're doing to get back on your platform then you'll ban me for making a make, make basically making fun of you guys for your hypocrisy yeah. it's insane yeah. But it's, it's it's dumb. You should not make jokes. You should not share misinformation. You should not say things that are that may be perceived in a bad way that might be problematic. But it's okay if you have an actual government and you know kill people and oppress people and all that. What what is the problem with that? You know who has a problem with that? Speaking of jokes, we got Fareed coming up, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> time is fleeting made a super chat of 10 pounds thank you so much i really appreciate it uh turkic kazarian poster said what did farid leaks do this time he didn't do anything new the reason we are doing this live stream is uh many of you guys uh, know that i have been wanting to respond to his entire series about me the thing is when I find time to do something, you know, to sit down and make videos, it's like for making a response video to Farid is the last thing that I wanted to do. And I felt like if it's left up to me, I will never do this. So I thought what I should do is instead to go live with uh, David and, you know, waste his time on uh, this stuff just as an excuse to have some live streams going on. And that's why we have come together today to respond to two videos that were um, made by Farid Response in response to my older videos. We want to go through them and want to refute them. And I think this is actually a very nice um, uh, way to do things, just do like a positive prophet and David would respond, and then we can just respond to yeah, my, my, jokes. My, my personal view is you you ignore people you ignore people especially people you know that you if you know you can crush someone anytime at will then you ignore them until they increase their popularity you know what i mean you you ignore them until they they increase their pro, their popularity so farid's not terribly uh t terribly popular so if it were me i'd probably let him get up to you know a hundred thousand but he's got over fifty thousand 
So, and he's dedicating, I'm just looking at his page. I think I've only watched, I watched the, the, the two videos that, uh, that you said we're going to discuss. Other than that, I, I think we, I, I believe I responded to one of his videos once in a live stream and then maybe watched another, I can't remember. Um, so I've seen like, let's say four or five of his videos um, ever, but um, yeah, it, it's almost like, here, here's what it's like, right? When you, when you find a guy who can sort of blow up in popularity over time, and you know you can sort of crush his points later on. You want him to become, you know, you want him to you want him to become popular so that you can then go. And then what it, what it ends up like is like like harvesting your crops, right? You got to go over to your you, you periodically like once a year go over to the Muhammad Hijab orchard and reap the benefits of Muhammad Hijab and all the dumb stuff he said. Then you go over to the Ali Dawa orchard and then you you uh you gather you gather together the fruits of all the dumb stuff that that Ali Dawa said and you just keep rotating and uh, you keep rotating around so hey if you want to toss uh, Farid up into the mix we can uh we can we can we can get a plentiful harvest here hey hey you're silent you're silent oh oh sorry i have to say i said before that he is um i think in my opinion um I don't want to say dumbest, but um, I would say he's he's one of the worst <laughs> in terms of uh, intellect and the strength of his arguments. The thing is, he has knowledge because he he studied and uh, memorized a lot of stuff uh, within Islam, but his uh, reasoning is just terrible. And I don't know if we will have good examples in the videos that we want to go through today, but we can check in a second. The first one that I want to uh, look at is the following video. It is titled uh, Debunked. Do Muslims worship the same God as Christians and Jews? Apostate Prophet. Uh, the, the good thing about Farid is that he created his channel just because of me. He said that. He admitted that. He created his entire channel just to refute my videos. And he did that for like the first 50 videos or so. And then he, wow. uh, oh, he, he took posted a break. That many, he's posted that many responses to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And then he, uh, after he was done with me, he decided, he, he said that he would not go on and do anything about anyone else. And then he changed his mind because it kind of took off. So he moved on to different people. But it was initially just for me. When he began making videos about others, I felt a little bit betrayed. But <laughs> yeah, what's <laughs> but up he, with uh, that, Fareed? Yeah. So you're going to make responses to AP and then you. <clears throat> terrible person. Yeah, terrible. Uh... <laughs> terrible. I mean, like like uh oh hey baby i'm with you forever Ooh, look at this other hot girl over here oh, let me go over here like have yeah. some have some fidelity man fidelity i thought we had a commitment i, th I yeah, trusted no commitment you whatsoever no commitment no loyalty. what what, what, what does this tell us about your religion for real I'm <laughs> so hey, uh, hey hey you can make one of those memes where the dude's with his girlfriend and he's looking back at someone else <laughs> <laughs> You can put a prostate profit and have Fareed looking at whatever he's talking about at some time, some new time. Maybe, maybe next stream I'll, I'll get out of that. <laughs> All right. Are you ready, David? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Uh, I assume that everybody else is also ready. So let's go ahead with this. Can you hear it? No, it's real quiet. What? Super quiet. Oh, okay. Well... <laughs> Share system audio. Now we have it. Okay. Allah has spoken. Okay. <laughs> so here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah We're doing another episode. I have Emin here with me. What is happening? <laughs> Maybe I should have downloaded this before. The curse of Allah. Yeah, I always download my stuff to uh, avoid yeah. things like this. What in the world is going on? See? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa We're doing another episode. I have Emin here with me today. And today, shall we be looking at a video called do Muslims worship the same God as Christians and Jews? What a strange question. I mean, any thoughts? <laughs> Do you think that's a strange question, David? No, it's one It's one of the most common questions that, that you get when you're dealing <laughs> with Christianity and, and Islam, is whether Christians and Muslims worship the same God. I don't even understand. <laughs> what a strange question. I really am losing my IQ watching this guy's vids. Anyways, assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, and Farid, shall we get into it? Nice. Let's go. Hi, everyone, and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet. Therefore, Jews... Okay. Uh, 
I don't know what's happening. What about, how about this? Uh, give me a second. I'll quickly download this video. and Got to download it. Play it. I don't know why this is happening right now. This is pretty terrible. In the meantime, you can tell people something that you uh, like for breakfast. I don't know. Uh, kind of a ton of eggs and egg whites guy. That's toss awesome. some, toss some guacamole on the eggs. <laughs> that sounds. Uh, good. So, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Farid, you know, uh, Farid. While you're downloading that, um, there's an issue. He kind of doesn't. He doesn't seem like the guy who can ever have like massive popularity. So he might he might top out around, you know, between 50. He's already he's already a little above 50. So he might be one of the guys who who maxes out between 50 and 100 because he doesn't have he doesn't have like the, uh, you know, the uh, me strong of like a Muhammad hijab or I, don't, I really don't even know what what why Ali Dawa is so popular because he doesn't have the normal features of someone who would be popular in Islam. I mean, he, he's, he's, he's like, he's like Farid in the sense that he seems, I mean, he, no, not, not to be me, but he, he seems, he seems dumber than a lot of other people. And yet he became massively popular. So I don't know, maybe, maybe Farid does, uh, does have it. But. Uh, Muhammad Hijab actually gave a very um, good explanation to that once uh, in their recent fights with Sajid Lipham. Muhammad Hijab uh, explained in response to Sajid Lipham that uh, Ali Dawa is not very well, you know, educated and very, and well versed and all that. But it's like Adidawa is very popular because he has a he has a unique way of appealing to the kids, you know, the younger people, you know. That, well, <laughs> you can see why that would be the case in Islam. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I mean, that is a that is a dude who said, you know, if his if his daughter got her first period at nine, she'd tell her she's ready to be married. Yeah, yeah. I find it so funny. I watched the video, and he's he's defending Ali Dawa, and he's saying he has a unique way of appealing to the to the younger people, to the little ones. Yeah, he tells them, <laughs> "Hey, you, <laughs> hey, little girl, hey, little girl, yeah, did you know that because you's nine and you've got your period, that you's ready for marriage? Ah, <laughs> huh? so go get married." <laughs> All right, we got it. Now we're proud of that. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. We're doing another episode. I have Emin here with me today. And today, shall we be looking at a video called Do Muslims Worship the Same God as Christians and Jews? What a strange question. Is it a strange question? Just kidding. Wait, let me go ahead. <laughs> no, it's uh, actually one of the most common questions. <laughs> Let's go. Hi, everyone, and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet. Therefore, Jews use different words for God, such as Adonai my Lord, or Hashem, the name, or Elah, or Elaha, God, which the Arabic Allah seems to have come from. The Christian and Jewish God's name is Yahweh, formed from four letters, in Greek known as... So, I mean, I just have to pause a little bit. Uh, here he shows that the word Allah has the word in and of itself. Supposedly he's assuming that it has roots from this Hebrew word Elah. It's possible. However, um, this kind of proves a simple point that uh, regardless if it's a title or a name, regardless of how you want to call it, it has the root in the same conception of the same God, right? The Lord of the heavens and the earth, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Uh, whether you want to call it a name or a title, it doesn't matter. Okay, and what exactly does it say about the point here? And this is this is very strange. Elaha is simply something that uh, people used in order to refer to deity. The Bible uses the same the Bible uses the same word uh, Elohim, uh, or uh, the word Eloh. It uses the same word to refer to the gods of different people, right? It, it uses the same uh, word in uh, in fact to refer to uh, gods that people made of uh, out of objects. It refers to them with the same exact word, Eloh. Uh, so just because Allah is from the same root, that does not mean that it has anything in common with the one God that Jews and Christians believe in. This is a very terribly uninformed position to have. Anything you want to add, David? 
Uh, not at this particular juncture, uh, but yes, you are you are correct. But I, I have to say in advance, I'm agree. I'm going to agree with some of what these guys said, but they're uh -huh. still they're still going to be uh, uh, wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I th I feel like they also started at a very. Um, they didn't really start from the beginning of my actual video. They skipped quite a little bit, which I find terrible. But let's go on. If you're referring to the eternal being that created the world. That is a law. That is God. I, I agree. Uh, let's keep going. I agree. I'd, yeah. I'd like to point out like one thing. So, if if let's say, um, yeah, you know, people in the West, people all over the world, they they're fans of the Undertaker. In the Arab world, we call them Al Hanuti. Okay, or at least mm -hmm. the, the, the Egyptians. Egyptians call them Al Hanuti. Does this mean they're referring to a completely different wrestler that lives in, I don't know, an altar? It's the same guy. Yeah. Same. <laughs> okay, uh, I already see that how that's a terrible analogy. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, so here, here's what they're getting right. Just uh, calling the same thing, clearly calling the same thing and referring to it by two different names or two different words doesn't mean you're talking about two different things. Uh, I have to point out they're they're undermining. It's funny you just mentioned the Undertaker, and I'm saying they're undermining uh, one of the main responses to a completely different ar argument. So this is complete. I want uh, the point is save save this clip because it's a refutation of something else that Muslims say. You'll recall AP that there is in the Quran. Allah saying that if Muhammad were to deliver a false revelation and claim that it's from God when it isn't, Allah would sever his aorta, right? Mm -hmm. So Allah would sever his aorta. That's that's the penalty. And then when Muhammad's dying, he's uh, from the poison. He was poisoned by a Jewish woman. He's saying he can feel the poison that he ate severing his aorta. And one of the main responses that Muslims give to that is that there are two different words used for aorta they both mean aorta but there's two different words for aorta right and yeah. so they say you see you see it's not talking it's it, it it's not a fulfillment of the prophecy because it's two different words because the aorta is sometimes called the life artery or it can be called uh, more specifically the the aorta and so they say ah it's using two different words even though they both both words refer to the aorta and so yeah. that's the refutation. But notice what Farage just said. Hey, just calling it two different things doesn't mean you're not talking about the same thing. So yeah. to parallel, so as far as wrapping up th this section, um, I mean, as far as what I'm talking about, uh, if I were to say, look, if I'm a false prophet, may the Lord drown me in a pool of H2O. And then later I'm drowning in a pool of water and I go, ah, I'm drowning in a pool of water. And you say, ha ha, you've been exposed. And then my defenders come along and say, no, he said he would be drowned in a pool of H2O, but he was drowned in a pool of water. Totally different words, totally different words. So you see, it's not a fulfillment of uh, of this prophecy. Um, and and so th that's the that's the valid point that they're making, although it refutes what they what what people say in response to other arguments. That um, you know, if you say H2O and you say water, you're you're clearly talking about the same thing, even though you're calling it different things. Yeah. And if you call uh, uh, if you call um, uh, if you call Mark Twain, Samuel Clemens, well, that Samuel Clemens is his real name. Uh, but you're clearly referring to the same person when you refer to Mark Twain or Samuel Clemens. So just using different names doesn't mean you're talking about two different, uh, two different individuals, but it doesn't, it didn't seem like that was your real point that just using no. a different name means that you're, you're, you're not talking about, the, the same thing or something. Well, the, the thing is, the, the main point in the video, uh, they are not getting it and not um, addressing it. And the analogy is therefore completely flawed. The main point of the video is that Islam does use the same word, God, which, uh, you know, the Hebrew Bible also uses, um, or supposedly uh, the word Allah comes from El Elah, which comes from uh, Elaha or Eloch and so on, which is a Semitic word, uh, which stands for deity. And in the Hebrew Bible, uh, this word is used for the the one God. But the one God's title uh, is that, and his actual name is Yahweh, as the, as, as the Bible um, says and reveals and also mentions over, uh, I don't know, how, how often? 6,000 times. And um, 
the but Islam does not have that name. Islam only has that title because uh, the Islamic people or Muhammad or whoever you know was in the uh, whoever was involved in creating Islam, they thought that uh, that the God's name is Allah. They had no idea about the name Yahweh at all. There is no mention of it in Islam. And Muslims deny that his name is Yahweh, right? So that was the entire point. When I bring up Yahweh here, I'm saying this is the name of the God of the Bible. Uh, Elohim or Eloh is merely a title. That's what he is. It's not his name. Uh, Faritan here comes and says, if we're talking about the undertaker, just because you say undertaker in, in America and we say something different in Arabic, that doesn't mean we're not talking about the same person. Well, yeah, of course, but uh, it's that's not a good analogy. You could say that if we said that Yahweh is not his real name, it's just a different word to refer to uh, Allah. But that's not the case. That is his unique name. And Islam does not have that. Yeah, and um, and the, the additional issue is because there are clearly differences between the God of the Bible and the God of the Quran. Where okay, you're 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 using a different name, no problem there. But I, I think part of your point when you were in that video is that the the name of God in the Bible seems like really really important, and Muhammad seems to have no clue anything about it. Um, and whereas, so it, it's, it's like, it, it, it's a really important thing. And then the author of the Quran, the God of the Quran seems to have no clue what that is. Um, and just uses this generic name that, that was, was common among the, uh, uh was common among the pagans as, as their, their, maybe the, maybe the top of their, uh, pantheon of yeah. gods. But, um, but in addition to using the different name and not being aware of the, the, the main revealed name, not just not just a you know a, a random noun or title or something like that. The actual like covenant name of God. In addition to all that, the description sounds the descriptions of God sound really different. And so, at what point that and this is the real question: At what point do you conclude you're talking about someone else? Because if you're talking about the Undertaker and you start describing him, and it's clear that like, like for instance, if you didn't know the under the Undertaker is called the Undertaker, and you call and you see this big guy. And you start describing him and it becomes clear to someone, oh, you're talking about the same guy here. You're talking about this guy. His, he's actually called the Undertaker. So you didn't know what his name is, but you're clearly talking about the Undertaker. Um, but what if you're talking about this guy? And I think he's like 6'10 or something like that. But what if you're talking about this guy and you start describing him and you're like, yeah, so I saw this guy in the airport. I think he's a rustler. He's like a, he's like five foot eight. Um, and he's, he's really skinny and he looks like he's about 25 years old. You're not going to be thinking that you're talking about the same guy here. Not only are you, you lack the name, um, you, you're giving a completely, di a completely different description of him. The, the only commonality is he's a rustler, but that, that, that's not enough to go on there to say you're talking about the same dude. Yeah, yeah. If, if we're talking about a king, um, just because we're using the same word king, that doesn't mean we're referring to the same person. The king that we are talking about in this case clearly has a name, which your religion, your scripture is unaware of. And that's the entire point. And we will come further uh, as we go into this to differences between uh, the God of Islam and the God of Christianity. And I'm not sure if they actually address this in the, in the video, but let's see. Person. And, I mean, you can do the same thing. Uh, I don't like to make this comparison, but you can do the same thing with the devil. You mentioned Russian, right? Uh, but we are, in Bosnia, we call God with the same name, Bog, right? Uh, none of us consider it a title, by the way. Everyone says it's a name of God. It's Bog, right? Which is uh, just because you were unaware of that, that doesn't mean that's not the case. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's just a word which means God, which is not the name. I mean, who who thinks which English speaker who refers to God as God thinks that God is, uh, you know, the personal name of the God that they are praying to? If you think that, that's simply not right, right? Mm -hmm. That's technically simply false. If if you are unaware of this, this doesn't change anything about the fact that that's false. Mm -hmm. Quite interesting, by the way. Uh, if you want to say Satan in English, you say Satan. If you want to say uh, Satan in, I assume, Bosnian and Russian, you say Javo, right? And if you want to say it in Arabic, it's Shaytan. Here, O Israel. That was, again, a completely false understanding of... Uh, is, is, Farid, is Farid Russian? 
No, uh, he, just, he just mentioned Russian. I don't know why he's bringing up Russian unless Fareed knows Russian or something. <laughs> no, this this guy here is be uh, is Bosnian, and, oh, okay. you know he speaks uh, Bosnian. And uh, they skipped parts of the video. In the video, I mentioned how God is merely a title, which uh, depending on where you live and what language you speak changes. Okay. And I mentioned in Russian, for example, it's Bog. So he was uh, adding his own knowledge to that. In Deutsch, in Deutsch, it's it's Gott. Gott. Gott, that's they, it. They say, Gruß Gott. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we say. All right. The Lord is our God. The Lord is one. In Hebrew, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. When in reality, the text reads, <laughs> the way he pronounces his Yehudi. You can tell he's got the he's got the tajweed, you know. Yeah. He's got the tajweed, <laughs> you know. But he won't do that for the Quran. La, 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 la. I remember this part. <laughs> it's actually funny. <laughs> no, it's and you know what? Uh, See, these are these aren't terrible guys. It's yeah, like, yeah. Maybe, maybe all right to hang out with. For for now, when you go to the later videos, it, it really gets bad. But. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh what's what's funny is i actually had a moment of self um you know like some 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 reflection here because uh you can see that i'm actually really uh, you know pronouncing it quite well the hebrew although it's a language that i had never you know learned to pronounce or anything like that and he is right on one thing very often when i quote the quran or when i say something in arabic i don't even bother to pronounce it properly i just uh i just anglicanize it and go with that so he's pointing out the irony here and uh, I, th I think i realized i guess i had a bias in those times because i was a little bit frustrated about my islamic past and you know leaving islam where i didn't want to bother pronouncing the islamic things the correct way but when it came to the hebrew i actually did do that so i have to be fair <laughs> it is an observation the quran never mentions yahweh the hadith never mentioned yahweh no islamic source ever mentions yahweh the... actually i also would like to add that the name yahweh cannot be found in the new testament either so i guess that Jews and Christians worship different gods as well. Uh, uh, important point. <laughs> Go ahead, David. <laughs> uh, so look at what look at what he just said. Um, <clears throat> in in the video that they just the, in the part of the video that they just showed immediately before this, you see exactly why that is. So you showed you showed the the Shema right. Mm -hmm. And you showed it as Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad, right? Yeah. And when in reality, as you pointed out, it's Shema Yisrael Yahweh Eloheinu Yahweh Echad. So why do yeah. why do Jews say um, Adonai instead of Yahweh? Well, by the time you get to, uh, well, I mean, I mean, starting off in the Old Testament, they, they eventually got to the point where. Because taking the Lord's name in vain, people think taking the Lord's name in vain is, you know, something, uh, oh, my God, or something like that, which, you know, to, to, to be careful, you might not want to do that or something like that. But in context, it's actually using that name, using the name Yahweh in le like that. And so Jews became so terrified that they would utter the name of Yahweh in vain, meaning they're, you know, just flippantly or something like that, that they started avoiding saying it at all, right? You, you don't want to say it. You start mm -hmm. replacing it with something like Adonai. And so you replace it with something else in order to avoid saying it. So by the time you get to the New Testament and the, the Gospels are written in Greek, when you're going to uh, use a word, even if they're quoting Old Testament scripture that refers to Yahweh, they use they use kurias, which is which is Lord, because they don't they didn't even hey we're not going to put this we're not going to start writing this name here right, um, so it was it was to it was because this had become uh, this had become a trend you you need to be ex exceedingly careful about using that name that they did not want to use that name and so it would be replaced with Lord. They're clearly aware of it. They're quoting the Old Testament left and right. They're clearly aware of what the name is. They know that's the name. They're, they they have knowledge of that. But you get to the you get to the Quran, and it's not Allah is saying, okay, don't call me by 
the covenant name that I revealed to the Jews. Don't call me by that name because you might take my name in vain. He seems to have absolutely no clue that there ever was such a name. Um, yeah. And he's got this, he's got this, this new name that you can say, you could just say it all day long and you don't have those same concerns about taking, taking the Lord's name uh, in vain. You know, what's very funny. I'm just checking the original video, which they are responding to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I mean, I don't. I don't want to be wrong here, right? I don't want to say anything wrong here. But uh, everything that you just said, look at this. Everything that you just said, everything that you just explained, my original video. I'm pretty sure I explained that here. In vain. Jews were usually anxious about the usage of God's. Uh, you did explain it. And replaced yeah. the name in prayers and in reading the Bible with Adonai. Oh, so, that's you know, why they cut that out. <laughs> or the Lord instead of Yahweh. Even in one of the most important Jewish prayers, the naughty, Shema Yisrael. Naughty, naughty. No, look, look at this. Look at this. I naughty, even explained naughty. it. I explained it before that part where they actually, uh, you know, make that uh, make that remark. <laughs> I don't understand. Did they not get it, or did they just? Uh, I don't know. What's, what's naughty, what's naughty. Most? So I yeah, I mean, you, oh. you'd be you'd be giving them the benefit of the doubt if you say, okay, maybe they just didn't understand anything you said here. Because if they did understand what you're saying here, then their response to you was completely undermined by what you actually said. Because you explained, yeah. you explained why people uh, became reluctant to use the name of God. Um, yeah. I even uh, further explained it as far as I uh, can tell. I further explained it. I explained why Christians did not use that name anymore. So I actually explained all those things. I also made another video, which is called How Allah Got His Name Wrong, in which I explained everything in even more detail. And how it's over time, you know, evolved. So these are things that are actually explained right here in the material that they are responding to, and also in a uh, in an additional video, which is even better than this one. But for some reason, they did not care and simply made that remark and 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 skipped that part of my actual video. What am naughty. I supposed to take from this, dear Farid? Naughty, naughty. Uh, now, again, everybody again, was watching. What am I supposed to take from this? From the fact yeah. that they actually skipped my explanation to that? Yeah, and here, here's what's funny. It's like, in order to give them the benefit of the doubt and think that they're not being deceptive, you have to think that they're kind of stupid and didn't understand anything you were saying, right? And you, it's not like you're saying something terribly sophisticated and hard to understand, right? Yeah. And so, and so, it's it's kind of it's kind of the the situation that we get into with Allah in the Quran, where Okay, there are two there are two possibilities here. E either either he's stupid or he's deceptive, right? Like like e either Allah actually knows that he's misrepresenting what Jews and Christians say, or uh, either he actually knows and he's deceptive, or he doesn't know and he's he's ignorant. And it's got to be one of those. So here yeah. it's it's uh, you you fans of Farid who are watching, uh, either <laughs> either he's being deceptive here. He 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 cut out the part of the explanation that would undermine the point that he's making. His response would undermine his response, or he didn't understand anything AP was saying. Instead, and so why are you listening to him if he doesn't understand simple points? Maybe I'm hard to understand. I don't know. It's, that might be the problem here. <laughs> yeah, super hard. <laughs> no, Muslims don't worship the same God that Christians and Jews worship. Islam just made up its own God, its own Arabic God, and appropriated qualities and traditions from biblical belief. If All right, so any, any final thoughts on the basic idea? Final. Well, he I barely touched anything. He conflicts between what? What? I said that. It said uh, final points. This is their final point. They, it seems like they barely touch most of your stuff. The original video is 11 minutes long and talks about lots of things. We are only at three minutes of their response video, and they're like, oh, any final points? <laughs> they didn't even address most of what I said. So, and, then, so, and then they call it reputation. I mean, what is this? So, and, 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 and part of the response is completely undermined by what you actually said. So yeah, they yeah. leave that out and then act like they've refuted it, and then they ignore most of what you said. This is interesting stuff. Yeah. So, no, yeah, so, so, they, so they, give, they give like three responses to the video, two of the responses that they gave are actually already answered directly in the video which they are responding to and they just get rid of that by skipping that part of my of my original video and then they're like here guys this is the refutation we're done with this refuted debunked destroyed islam wins what is this man seriously <laughs> religion is and what god is basically because 
Uh, the analogy he gives with the uh, two Americas is very, very deceptive. Wait a minute. They didn't even they didn't even watch that. They just skipped that. No. Yeah, they didn't show that. So <laughs> uh, this could be used for religions. However, uh, this is uh, the, the the God that we believe in is the same. Our concepts of that God are definitely different. And uh, he mentions that uh, Christians and Jews shouldn't admit this because Muslims are calling them deluded and stuff like that. Here's the thing. Uh, there are definitely beliefs in Christianity and Judaism that we will say openly without any fear are delusion. We don't believe that God has a son. We believe that's a deluded belief, that it leads to delusion. There's nothing that we have to be afraid of saying. However, regardless of that fact, there's no reason for, that's not a valid reason for Christians and Jews to say that we don't worship the one eternal creator of the heavens and the earth. What we define as God is the eternal creator of the heavens and the earth. Beautiful. I'd also like to add that. Um, Beautiful. Beautiful. Wasn't wasn't there just a recent video in which these people are cheering because uh, they they are telling a Christian that uh, that a Jew and the Christian do not worship the same God. Only Muslims and Jews worship the same God because the Christians believe in uh, three gods or something like that. And this is like this is cheered on. And I'm pretty sure these people are you know, uh, pushing that same point. So otherwise, I would really ask these guys to uh, refute those Muslims who say we worship a different God and to say, hey, dear brothers and sisters, be quiet. You are wrong. We all worship the same God. I, I don't, I'm, I'm completely confused here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Having two different concepts or two different views in regards to a, um, in regards to a being doesn't mean that those are two different beings. Um, the person that I meet at work, my perspective of him is going to be different than the perspective of his wife and kids of him, for example. Um, so, uh, similarly, or, or not really similarly, but in, but in regards to... Uh, I agree. The funny thing is they're not really addressing the point of the video at all. Yeah, uh, I mean, as far as they're... I mean, the, the issue is a bit more difficult than they're letting on here. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're making they're making a somewhat valid point in the sense that if you just say, "Oh, we called this guy by a different name," therefore we're talking about two different people, that doesn't follow. And um, you know, people could differ on in their views of the same individual. That doesn't mean they're talking about the same individual. Someone might say, "Yeah, I love the apostate prophet," and some might say, "Oh, the apostate prophet is the worst person in the world." That doesn't mean they're talking about two uh, two different people, but and and you have to be careful about saying, hey, we're talking about we're talking about two different individuals or two different gods, because um, even within Islam or even within Christianity, there are going to be differences. Like if I say, hey, my you know, my God performed a thousand miracles. And you say, well, I believe God performed a thousand and one miracles. Are you, you know, does that mean you're talking about two different gods? Because they're they're a little different in yeah. uh, in their in their descriptions. Um, so you, on the one hand, they're right. You do have to be careful about that. Um, but at, at the same time, there, it does seem like there comes a point when you say we're, we're talking about two, we're clearly talking about two different gods here. Like, I, I mean, I think you could even say that like within Islam, like you have the Salafis. Are these guys Salafis? They seem like Salafis. Um, I'm sure Farid is, uh, a Salafi, the other is not. So, not. so Salafis believe that Allah has an actual literal body, and he's got like these, you know, two right hands, and he's got a shin with apparently two feet, you know, so maybe two feet at the end of one leg or something like that. And you look at this description, he sounds like a monster. And non Salafis sort of uh, make fun of them for taking these passages and, and assuming that the Quran is, I mean, Quran and the Muslim sources are talking about. Uh, a, a a literal body, but there you'd 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 actually believe. Hey, some Muslims say Allah has a literal body and looks like a monster, uh, but we can't get our mind around it. So don't try to picture him in your head. And then other Muslims will say that this is this is actually ridiculous. You have a ridiculous concept of God. I would say it's starting to sound like they're talking about two different gods there if, if, if the if the differences are that massive. But they would probably want to say, no, we're all talking about Allah. We just have some very uh some very different conceptions um, yeah, of yeah. Allah. But 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 think of it think of it this way, right? So think of it. There, there are like conspiracy theories with like Shakespeare. So some people say don't believe that Shakespeare wrote those plays. They believe that someone else like Francis Bacon or someone else uh wrote those plays. 
So because th what these guys are saying is, hey, we we all believe in one creator of the universe. Therefore, we're talking about the same God. So we believe in in a being that did something or we all believe in a a necessary being. So they believe in a being that's necessary or they believe in a creator of the universe. Therefore, we're worshiping the same being. But think think about it like this. So you have these conspiracies with, uh, you know, Shakespeare. Some people say most people believe Shakespeare wrote the, the, the works of Shakespeare. Uh, some people say Francis Bacon or some other guy wrote them. But imagine we come up and and I say Shakespeare wrote them and you say, no, actually, Francis Bacon wrote those plays as uh, two different people. And I say, well, we believe we believe in the same we believe that we believe in the same thing because we both believe that those plays were written and that there is a writer of the plays. So we believe in the same thing. And we believe that there had to be so some sort of necessary writer of written things. And so you see, we're talking about the same guy here. Well, no, it's clear we're not talking about the same guy, right? If you're saying Francis Bacon and I'm saying Shakespeare, we're obviously talking about two different individuals who are both uh, who share a lot of the same features, but uh, and who did the same thing. Either way, either one of them wrote the works of Shakespeare. But it's clear we're not talking about we're not talking about the same the same person there. And yeah, when, yeah. when you when you compare the, the the God of Islam and and the God of the Bible, you get enough differences to where. Yeah. So here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. You know, um, in uh, these people would never say that they worship the same God that Hindus worship, for example. Although Hindus um, have a um, you know have have a vast number of. Uh, gods and uh or or uh you know divine beings um on top of which there is a god with three different manifestations who is the uh the actual creator of everything that exists uh you could say by the same logic you know hey you know what um we all worship the same God, you know. We, we worship the same God that Hindus worship because, in the end, you know, it's it's the it's the eternal Creator who created everything and all that. But that's not really how it works, right? Or you could uh, talk about uh, Taoism, for example, which is something that I studied last year very much, and they believe in the Tao, which is uh, you cannot define the Tao. The Tao is the eternal force behind everything, the uh, the balance of all things and all that, the origin of everything. You could say, well, you know, we worship the same God that uh, that uh, Tao Tao worship that's not really how it works though right you have uh, a completely different god um and i agree with them on one thing you could have different understandings of the same entity that you worship and still worship the same god and i could say in the case of islam muslims do uh, claim to be worshiping the very same God who uh, sent the prophets and communicated with the people that are uh, you know mentioned in the Bible and who um, gave people inspirations and revelations. It is based on the same deity. It is based on the same uh, somewhat on, the, on a similar understanding of that deity and what that deity uh, wants from you and uh, what he originally instructed humans to do. They do base their beliefs on the Abrahamic tradition and on the biblical tradition and all that. I completely agree with all of that. But the main point here of this video is that uh, Muslims do not understand this God of the Bible. Uh, they are completely detached from this God of the Bible. They don't understand the name of the God of the, God of the Bible. They don't know what his name is. They reject that his name is the name that he himself says uh, his name is in the Bible because they also reject the Bible as, a, as, an, as an actual authority. Uh, they reject much of biblical uh, you know, theology and uh, logic and morality and whatever uh, there is. On top of that, um, it's not like Christians who, uh, if you are non-Christian and non-Jewish, you could simply say Christians come from the same tradition. They were Jews who then, you know, uh, you know, had their had their own religion, which is still connected to that same tradition. In Islam, it is not that way. I explain that here as well. In Islam, you have a different culture that is far away from uh, the Abrahamic tradition, which uh, out of nowhere adopts that religion and simply appropriates certain concepts within that religion and then claims to be from that same tradition. There is a difference here. And I'm pointing out exactly why. And I'm pointing this out in an 11-minute in video. And here they only showed like 
uh, two minutes of it and then skipped and uh, added their own conclusions and sold that to their audience as a complete refutation of my points. In reality, if you want to watch the actual video that I made, I don't want to be I don't want to be bragging here or anything, but <laughs> I mean, please watch the video. Please watch everything that is contained here and what I'm actually saying. Uh, yeah, and, and it's not it's not terribly time consuming because if your video is eleven minutes and their video is like uh, what is it seven minutes or something like that, people can actually watch your video because notice that that always that that seems to be the goal in a lot of Islamic uh, dawah and refutations and responses and so on is you generally know that most of your audience is not going to watch the original and so yeah. you can kind of pretend that you've refuted it. Um, so I would encourage everyone, uh, especially the Muslims, um, watch the original video, watch the original video and then see if it's an actual refutation. Uh, but but they, they basically portray you as saying, um, you know, uh, they use a different word for God in a different language. Uh, and there are some differences in description. And therefore, Christians and Muslims don't worship the don't worship the same God when in reality. And you just touched on this. The reason, the, the only real reason they're claiming that, that Christians and Jews and Muslims worship the same God is that the Quran says that Jews and Christians and Muslims worship the same God. If the Quran did not say that, I mean, these are the guys who, I mean, just just repeatedly mock Christianity, right? And yeah. so if you, if I were to say, hey, you know, I worship the triune God of the Bible who loved humanity so much that the second person of the Trinity entered creation, took on a human nature so that he could die for sins of humanity, that the God you believe in? No, they'd have nothing but mockery for that. They'd have nothing but insults. And so you're right. They kind of want to, they kind of want to play both sides. They want to, on one hand, mock, uh, mock our God and simultaneously claim, hey, we we uh, we we worship the same God. Guys, we worship the same God. And this is even, you, you know what, here, um, look at the very beginning. This is a point that I made at the very, very beginning. And they completely uh, left it out and never mentioned it to their to their viewers. Uh, oh, wait, this is muted, right? <laughs> uh, unmute this. God is one God. Why are we disagreeing? Just hold hands, everybody. <laughs> Your God and our God is one God. I mean, what could be clearer? I don't have a problem with making people have more peace together. Like, so uh, that God. was actually the main point. I was uh, explaining how they say Maltese, these things. Allah means God in Christianity. A very common argument presented by moderate Muslims. Oh. So I, I basically, this is like the first thing that I address. People say, oh, you know, we, we use the same word uh, among different religions in Arabic. You know, we, we refer to the same God. And then I go in depth into, uh, you know, talking Peace about Allah. certain things like God this. in German, Dio in French, Dios in Spanish, Dio in Italian, Bog in Russian, Allah in Arabic. Christians use these words that mean God because they don't refer to God by his name, but by his title, the God. This is a... <laughs> I mean, these are all points which they seemingly, uh, seemingly raise as objections, but that are already answered in the original video, and they never address it because they skip what's actually in the original video. Uh, and yeah, look at this part. Look, in that response to you, they mentioned a little thing about the two Americas, right? It's it's very funny because in the response video, he says, and the analogy that he made about two Americas, which analogy? If you watch their response video, you cannot see that analogy at all because they skipped that as well. Here's what they're talking about. It might be a little bit dramatic as far as I remember it. Look at this. Country emerges somewhere, gives itself a name similar to America, appropriates fundamental American values and history while brutally corrupting and twisting those values and rewriting the history, claims that it was the original America and the America we have today was fake and corrupted and bad. Imagine they declare war on the old America and try to subjugate it. But when everything fails and this new America loses, they suddenly try to reconnect by saying, hey, we are all the same. We have the same values. We shouldn't be fighting. Why don't we hold hands and have peace? <laughs> Although my America is still greater than your fake America. And one day you will realize that and join our America or perish. <laughs> Islam is very... <laughs> Like that's, <laughs> that's the analogy that I was making, which they completely skipped. Yeah, they, they cut that out. So I, I have to, I have to say, AP, um, 
Well, I mean, we could give the benefit of the doubt once again and think, you know, for time constraints, they didn't want to include everything because uh, I, I I rarely will sure. include everything from a video. It's like you try to focus on you try to focus on the important points, the relevant points and respond to those points. And uh, maybe they're not the brightest guys in the world. And so they didn't understand that certain things you were saying uh, actually undermined and refuted the their responses so maybe we're get you know we give the benefit of the, the benefit of the doubt but if if we keep seeing that them cutting parts out that refute what they're saying and leaving things out uh gonna start to get a little suspicious that maybe maybe he knows he's being deceptive yeah 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 absolutely so what do you think should we go into that into the other video that yeah, i yeah, spent yeah. here we already spent a lot of time here but yeah let's see all right, let's see. Where do we have that? Let's see. Let's oh, you got a down did you download that one? I yeah, I did. Sweet. Salam alaikum fam. What? Today we'll be looking at Oh here, here it is. Okay, here it is. Fam. <laughs> fam. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. What's up, fam? I know. I know. For, hey, Farid fam. <laughs> hey, shout out to all the Farid fam out there who are watching this video. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this video is called the most violent and awkward Quran verse, which and they are responding to that. Salam alaikum, fam. Today we'll be looking at the most violent and awkward verse in the Quran, as Advan. This is one of Advan's latest videos and just came out around a week ago. So let's see if his content has gotten any better after doing this for two years. In any case, I'm going to keep this video short and sweet. Inshallah. Ready. Indeed, the penalty for those who wage war against Allah and his messenger and strive upon earth to cause corruption is none but that they be killed or crucified or that their hands and feet be cut off from opposite sides. So what is this punishment for? Well, the first thing is waging war against Allah and his messenger. This does not only mean those who bear arms and attack the Muslims. In common Islamic terms, this also stands for opposing Islam and ideologically fighting Islam. If you want to verify that, you can check several Islamic sources, like the most popular interpretation of the Quran by Ibn Kathir, which says, wage war mentioned here means oppose and contradict, and it includes disbelief, blocking roads, and spreading fear in the fairways. The second reason given is causing corruption or mischief in the land. What this means is doing all the things that are outlawed in Islam, or that are an act of disbelief and disobedience, which is basically everything. Ibn Kathir describes it as all kinds of evil, so everything. According to Advan's understanding, so, he'll take that very literally. I remember. Standing any sin in Islam is punishable by getting your hands and feet chopped off. But is this Ibn Kathir's understanding? Is that what you understood from what I said, David? Uh, no, I, I, it, it, it is true. Some, some and I, I have a massive problem uh, in that in my videos there are always people who do not understand sarcasm. They don't understand hyperbole. <laughs> They don't take anything I say extremely literally, even if I'm being sarcastic or even if I'm being hyperbolic. And and I'm talking I'm talking about fans who watch my video and they're like yeah, from a different yeah. from a different country and something like that. And we'll go, I can't believe you said that, David. Blah 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 blah. And like I, I, you know, I don't I don't even feel like under like explaining it to the person. <laughs> I mean, what can I say? It's like I'm I'm sitting there and joking about it and saying, uh, so things that Red are considered, considered says mischief. Everything. Oh, really? <laughs> so basically everything. And then you say, so you also mean uh, I can be my hands and feet can be cut off for, I I don't know, uh, attaching. <laughs> things to my hair which well, is well if it's everything well guess what <laughs> eating a sandwich is something so it's part of everything so does ridvan think that i could be <laughs> killed for eating a sandwich <laughs> and i and i then say no genius that's not what i mean i'm being i'm exaggerating you know i'm being sarcastic i'm being hyperbolic and then he's like, but then why did you say everything? <laughs> <laughs> no, rather in his commentary, he directly says that this is for those who commit the types of crimes the ayah mentioned. In other words, if one cuts off the hands and feet of another, then the same punishment shall be delivered to him. That's not what that means. No, and uh, and and I mean, it is cool that he that he played your clip, but I mean, that's not what that means. Am I? Am I? Am I? Am I? Is my brain doing something wrong here? That's not what that means. Wait, he was saying that he's as far as 
I mean, yeah, you could, we could watch it again, to be clear. Uh, maybe maybe I'm missing something here. But it sounds like he's saying that this is sort of a, a general description of other things, an inclusive statement about thing, other things that the Muslim sources will say. So you have the, you know, you have uh, stoning for adultery and you have beheading of apostates and you have chopping off hands for theft and so on. He's just saying this is sort of referring to all the other penalties uh, for various ways that you could spread corruption in the land or mischief in the land. It's talking about the specific penalties for specific crimes that are laid out elsewhere in the Muslim sources. Yeah, um, yeah. And what, while it clearly, I would say while it, while it clearly includes those things, I would not say it's, it's limited to those things because, he, you know, in the, in the, uh, in the passage, I mean, in, in, in Imid Kathir's commentary, which you quoted, um, do you want to pull the, it up? Yeah, yeah. So Ibn Kathir, so he, he gives the passage, the recompense of those who wage war against Allah and his messenger and do mischief in the land is only that they shall be killed or crucified or their hands and their feet be cut off on opposite sides or be exiled from the land. Wage war. So this that that was a quotation from the Quran, uh, Surah 5, verse 33. And then Ibn Kathir says, wage war mentioned here means oppose and contradict. So oppose and contradict. So you're just contradicting. Uh, Allah, you're opposing Allah and Muhammad, and it includes disbelief, blocking roads, and spreading fear in the fairways. Well, guess what? Spreading fear and blocking roads are not elsewhere. As far as I'm, you don't have a lot. You don't have a lot, a lot of clear uh, Sharia punishments for those kinds of things. Um, so, disbelief, blocking roads, contradicting, opposing. It really sounds like this is saying that the Islamic leader gets to decide punishments in responses to various ways of causing corruption in the land or spreading mischief in the land. And I have to point out, you have in uh, you have in Muslim countries when there's something they want to throw someone in prison for, it is very common to say for spreading corruption in the land or for spreading mischief in the land. In fact, re you'll recall, AP, you may have seen Ali Dawa saying that you you should be executed, but what he said was, "You who um, what do you, you leave your religion and cause corruption in land by spreading it." Right. So mm -hmm. Ali Dawa is saying, "Hey, the, he's applying Surah five verse thirty three to you." So it looks like this is a more general statement saying that Muslims can decide to uh, to wage war against someone who commits the vague crime of causing corruption in the land or spreading mischief in the land. And that, that can include a lot of things and even go beyond things that are specifically laid out with specific penalties in the Muslim sources. Yeah. There yeah. You go. Wage war. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I mean, here it says, um, wage war mentioned here. This is uh, Ibn Kathir. It's, he says wage war mentioned here means oppose and contradict. And it, it includes disbelief, blocking roads and spreading fear in the fairways, which is what you said. And it says mischief in a land refers to various types of various evil. types of evil and various types of evil. Uh, it is further um, explained how um, it is, you know, the uh, oppression, uh, opposition, lots of things that the thing is, the thing is, look, uh, what he says here is just very weird. What he says is that okay. feet of another, the I am those who go oh, rather in his commentary, he directly says that this is for those who commit the types of crimes the ayah mentioned. In other words, if one cuts off the hands and feet of another, then the same punishment shall be delivered to him. That's not what it That's says. Not, no, no. And, and, That's and not what that, it says. That can't, that can't, it can't mean that, right? If Ibn, I mean, Ibn Kathir is, is referring to those penalties, right? Notice yeah. the penalties are crucifixion or exile or something like that. And the crimes are not, well, if you've exiled someone, then you could be exiled too. Um, if you've crucified someone, then someone can crucify you. This is not eye for eye. Yeah. It's Ibn Kathir says that the the crimes include things like disbelief, opposing and contradicting Allah, um, blocking roads, spreading fear. And the penalties for these things are execution, crucifixion, exactly. um, or exile. So this is definitely is not what what Farid says it is right now. So he's just. He, I'm sorry, but if this is how Farid reads 
interpretations of the Quran. Oh, he reads basic text. Oh, you, don't, reads. you don't even have to. <laughs> you don't even have to have a deep understanding of the Quran and its uh, its interpretations. This text simply does not say that. You don't have to be too familiar with the material to come to that conclusion. Yeah, this no, notice, text notice, does no, not say that uh, this text does not say if people cut off your hands and feet, then you should also cut off their hands and feet. No, it says those who wage war against Allah and do mischief in the land, you can do to them several kinds of things like kill them, crucify them, cut off their hands and feet, exp uh, expel them, and so on. That's yeah, what it says. He totally massacred this. Look at what it actually <laughs> says here. The correct opinion, the correct opinion, is that this ayah is general. Uh-huh, yeah, 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 yeah. Very general, a little too general, considering you're talking about crucifying people, <laughs> chopping off body parts. This ayah is general in meaning and includes the idolaters. So idolaters, right? Idolatry. Ibn Kathir said it includes disbelief. The idolaters and all others who commit the types of crimes the ayah mentioned. What types of crimes did the ayah mention? It mentioned... It mentions spreading corruption or mischief in the land. It mentioned things like that. But then Ibn Kathir says this includes all kinds of things, including disbelief and just contradicting Allah, uh, blocking roads, all kinds of things. So Ibn Kathir, so notice Ibn Kathir says it means exactly what you said it means. Yeah. Uh, Fareed puts it up on the screen. And then says that Ibn Kathir here means something that he obviously and indisputably can't possibly mean. In other words, if Ibn Kathir means what Fareed says he means, he just means, hey, if you do something, then you will be done back to the same nice. thing will be done back to you. Which is the same Ibn thing Kath to you. Ibn Kathir must be the, the worst communicator in history apart from Allah <laughs> and Muhammad. Because if, if that's what he meant, then saying, hey, if you're if you're if you merely disbelieve or uh, if you're you're blocking roads or something, then we apply these 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 penalties of crucifixion or chopping off body parts and so on to you. Uh, my goodness, that Fareed Fareed needs to go back to kindergarten. Fareed, you put the text here on the screen, and you cannot understand the text that you are putting on the screen. I'm pretty sure that there are. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that there are lots of Muslims in his audience who, if they look at the screen, they realize that this is not at all in agreement with what Farid is saying here, but they'll just quietly move I, on from that I think thought. you're giving his audience way too much credit here. Um, I think mo I think many, if not all of them, would go, wow, what a decisive reputation. I can tell, by the, con I can tell by the condescending tone of Farid's voice that he must be refuting AP here. But notice we're, we're in the same situation that we were in last time where uh, he's either deceptive and he knows he's being deceptive and he knows he's twisting the text to refute you or he's stupid and he can't understand words off a page. But either way, how in the world should we take this seriously as a refutation of anything you said? We can go for both. Option both. That's true. It is possible to be stupid and deceptive. Yeah. Who commit the types of crimes the ayah mentioned. No. In other words, if one cuts off the hands and feet of another, then the same punishment shall be delivered to him. So you are the you are the worst interpreter of the Quran, Farid. Please don't do that. So an eye for an eye. No. Ibn Kathir then mentions the story of the Uraniyin who committed these acts to some Muslim shepherds and thus were punished by the same. So noted, Van. This yeah, that's given as an example of where where, where uh, you can give them. Uh, a punishment according to their crimes, not the exact same thing. And as an example of people who literally did, uh, you know, fight and cause corruption, and cause oppression, and so on. That is merely an example, not to point out that this is an eye for eye a rule, but that this is that, that this means you give people a punishment which they deserve. It's not a freaking punishment for every sin, ya jahil. But all of this. <laughs> <laughs> Aside, I'm long not done with this verse. Remember but, how the verse goes. What? But but by the way, um, there, there's a uh, so th that story about the uh, uh, the people. <laughs> it's one of the, it's one of the most epic stories um, in the hadith. Uh, the story about you know some people convert to Islam and then they they get a tummy ache and Muhammad says, "Well, go drink a bunch of camel urine," and so <laughs> they do. And it says, and then they were they were healed. And they became enraged because they were healed and killed the shepherd and scattered the camels. And then so Muhammad like burns out their eyes with hot nails and stuff like this. And, 
it starts mangling like like that and then leave them and leaves mm -hmm. them in the hot sun stretched out to to burn and die of uh, blood loss and, and dehydration so uh so I mean, one, this is a perfect example. I've never actually made a video on this, but I, I would say that's a, that's a, that's a story where it's, it's obvious that they're rewriting history because it's obviously what, it's obvious what really happened. These guys showed up, they converted to Islam. They got sick. Muhammad said, drink some camel urine. They went and drank some camel urine. They didn't get any better. They still felt sick. And they thought, wait, this is the prophet we're following. He just got us to drink a bunch of camel urine, this idiot. And so they apostatized, said, we're not following this guy. He's an idiot. He made us drink camel urine over some nonsense. It didn't even work. Now we feel even more sick. They 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 apostatize, get mad. And then Muhammad just, he can't stand people leaving Islam. So he gets all he gets all brutal with them. So I think that's a perfect example of, of people rewriting, uh, rewriting history to, to bring it in line with Islam. Um, but uh, th there is an interesting hadith where, um, someone was asked, "What what were these guys treated like that for? What why why were their eyes burned out and all this other stuff? Was it for kufr or for the other sins they committed?" And Muhammad's companion said, "For kufr." So they were act. It was actually because of the Muhammad was enraged over their apostasy and unbelief. Oh yeah. So yeah. So the, basically, the hadith contradict uh, contradict Farid here, uh -huh. but uh, and that's even a part. I mean, we could agree with everything he's saying. Notice what he's saying. He's saying they were treated like this because they must have done all of that to these shepherds, um, and therefore it was just eye for eye. It was just hey, you did this, and therefore we're doing that back to you. Um, so the, the narrative is here. Um... Because some people from the tribe of Okal came to the Prophet and embraced Islam. The climate of Medina did not suit them, so the Prophet ordered them to go to the ordered them to go to the herd of uh, milk camels and ch of charity and to drink their milk and urine as medicine. They did so, and after they had recovered from their ailments, allegedly, they turned renegades, uh, reverted from Islam, and killed the shepherd of the camels and took the camels away. The prophet sent some people in their pursuit, so they were caught and brought, and the, prophets ordered, the, the prophet ordered that their hands and legs should be cut off, and that their eyes should be branded with heated piece of iron, and that their, cuts, that their cut hands and legs should not be cauterized till they die so they are left out in the heat until they die with their hands and legs cut off i have to say uh one thing here i'm not um i'm not a moral authority and not a lawgiver and nothing like that at all but in all honesty i would not expect somebody whom i follow who is known for his justice to apply such a brutal punishment to people no matter if they did uh, something similar you know or something terrible i mean is this really how you are supposed to treat human beings human bodies and then be known as uh the very just guy who treats humanity with dignity it's kind of messed up to me i don't know hey yo i actually uh, i actually found the hadith here uh it's in sunan an nasai it is sahih it is number 307 so uh, very, very parallel here, but you have the added uh, claim from a companion. So it was narrated from Anas bin Malik. Can, can you tell me the thing again, the number? Uh, it's, it's on Sunnah.com. It's number 306, I think in the, uh, let's see. Um, I could send, yeah, I think it's number, uh, Sunnah on the side 306 in this one. I think it's 307 in the written edition because they use slightly different numbering systems. But um Oh, you want to pull it up? Hmm. I was thinking of it, but let me look up. I'm trying to hey, I could just send you the link real quick, right? You could do that, yeah. Why, uh, why right? You... Oh, I, I think I think I got it. I think I found it. I think I found it. That's not it. Yep, there you go. So I'll go ahead and read it off the page there. It was narrated from Anas bin Malik that some Bedouins from Arena came to the Prophet and became Muslims, but the climate of Al Medina did not suit them. Their skin turned yellow and their stomachs became swollen. The Messenger of Allah sent them to some pregnant camels of his and told them to drink their milk and urine until they recovered. Then they killed the camel. Wait, what? Until they recovered, right? So uh, that's one of the funny parts is supposedly these guys get better from what uh, from what Muhammad said. Uh, but then, then they killed the camel herder and drove the camels away. 
He's got something enraged these guys. Usually being miraculously healed or even like just medicinally healed is not going to not going to send you into a murderous rage. Yeah, the, these guys must be very nutty people who are healed by these camels and they and they're like, "Oh, we feel better because of these camels." You know what, guys? We should kill these camels. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we believed it. We believed in Muhammad because of all the amazing scientific evidence, but you know what? Now that we're healed because of what he told us, let's go on a killing spree. The messenger of Allah sent people after them and they were brought back. Their hands and feet were cut off and their eyes were smoldered with burning nails. <laughs> Muhammad, remember, ladies and gentlemen, Muhammad was a mercy to all mankind. The commander of the believers, so here we have, the commander of the believers, Abdul Malik, said to Anas when he was narrating this hadith to him, were they being punished for kufr or for a sin? He said, for kufr. <laughs> right? <laughs> so notice, this is, this is, this is for Reed correcting yeah. Anas bin Malik. <laughs> for, for disbelief. Yeah. This, yeah. Oh, wow. Don't believe Anas bin Malik, who is such a, such a huge, respectable authority in uh, the, the transmission of Hadith. No, don't believe him. Believe Farid. <laughs> but what does Anas bin Malik know compared to me? Farid responds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What a guy. <clears throat> oh, what a guy. All right. Whoever kills a soul, unless for a soul or for corruption. Well, that's only part of the verse. The actual verse goes like this. Because of that, we decreed upon the children of Israel that whoever kills a soul, unless for a soul or for corruption done in the land, it is as if he had killed all mankind. And whoever saves one, it is as if he had saved all mankind. Okay, whatever you say. But we actually do find this concept somewhere else. We find it in the Talmud. Now, if we look... Why did he skip them? Oh. That whoever kills a person has killed all mankind. In Abrahamic, biblical, Jewish scripture, we don't actually find such a thing anywhere in biblical texts. It doesn't exist. What happened there? What did they skip? I'm really curious, but let's go on. Of course, we could go ahead and accept the usual Muslim objection. Well, it probably did exist, but the Jews falsified their scripture and probably removed it. Uh, straw man? Then there's no reason to assume that this text was removed from the Old Testament. Since there is no motive to do so, it is far likelier that the text belongs to how is it a straw man i don't understand <laughs> the oral law or a non-extant scripture there were many books that were seen as scripture and were even referred to in the old and new testament but were lost through the passage of time ironically though we're going to get to the topic of tampering with text in a bit therefore adam the first man was created alone to teach you that with regard to anyone who destroys one soul from so this is um they're really terrible with preserving the context of what I'm actually uh, mentioning here. But this is uh, the source here is given. This is from the Talmud, uh, Sanhedrin 37a, and I'm uh, quoting it as it is. Uh, yeah. uh, but, but by the way, because this is this is going to be important here in a moment, and it's also it's also on uh, on for for Reed's going to have it on the screen, but he he either once again totally misses it and doesn't understand it, or he's being deceptive. But right before this. Uh, in the in the at the top there, the proof for this is as we found with Cain, who killed his brother, as it is stated concerning him, the voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. This serves to teach that the loss of both his brother's blood and the blood of his brother's offspring are ascribed to Cain. And I think you're going to see this more clearly if I re if I recall correctly. Um, uh, but no, I mean I know I I recall correctly from the uh from the talmudic understanding of what this is saying here but i think i'm not sure i think it's in the passage that farid quotes um what this actually says here the, the, the argument is this ladies and gentlemen uh so cain kills abel and then god says your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground so some rabbis pointed out that in Hebrew, it actually says bloods, which I've heard is it, you, you can say bloods and, and not mean too much by it. But they draw a conclusion from it. They say because it says bloods, plural, his bloods cries out from the ground. They draw a conclusion that, that, that God is being God is trying to say something here. And what they conclude is that um, it's not just able, it's all his future generations. It's all of their bloods combined. Um, that are crawling, that are crying out from the ground. And so the conclusion that they draw is you didn't just kill Abel, you killed all the future generations that would have come from Abel. And the, the reason this is important is 
the Quran doesn't get that part. And so in context, it makes no sense because in the Quran, it's uh, so Cain killed Abel and then a bird shows up and shows him how to uh, shows him how to bury his brother and he buries his brother. And then it says, therefore, God revealed, therefore, Allah revealed that if anyone killed a man, except for you know various crimes, uh, it's as if he's killed all mankind. It makes no sense to say, wait, a bird showed showed Cain how to bury Abel. A bird showed him that. Therefore, uh, therefore, if anyone kills a man, it's as if he's killed all mankind. What's missing is this is this passage from the same narrative in the Talmud, which explains the reasoning, which is that since God says your brother's bloods cry out to me from the ground, mm -hmm. and they draw a conclusion that God is talking about all future <clears throat> generations, if you leave that out, there's no therefore, right? Yeah. There's no therefore. It doesn't follow from the story about the bird, that lesson. The, it only follows from this point about the bloods. And so this is, it, I mean, guys, it is obvious as clear as day to anyone who has common sense what happens here. Muhammad has heard stories either directly from Jews or for people who are familiar with Jews or from Muslims who've uh, who've converted uh, to Islam from Judaism and know this story. It's clear as day that he's familiar with the story as it occurs in the Talmud, because part of this is not in the Bible. Part of it comes from the Talmud. Um, it's as clear as day as Muhammad had, that Muhammad had some familiarity with the story in the Talmud, but he he leaves out in the Quran a very important detail, which is what explains the entire story. Once you leave that out, the story makes no sense. How are you getting, oh, a bird showed Cain how to, how to bury Abel. Therefore, God revealed if anyone, no. In the Talmud, it's, yes, you have the story. And then because of his, his bloods are crying out that, uh, that God is actually telling you something about, um, about all, uh, about when you killing, when you kill someone, it's as if you're killing all future generations. What's important is it's not God saying, it's not God saying, therefore, if you kill someone, you're, it's as if you're killing all mankind. It's a rabbi drawing this as an inference. He's saying, yeah. because God said this, we can conclude this. But I mean, for this is the thing, look, um, even if you make a response video, it would be best if you you don't have to you don't have to include the entire footage, right? I don't do that. You don't do that. Nobody does that. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to in include the entire video that you're responding to, but True. at least include the actual context of whatever you're responding to. In this case, I, w I just went to my original video. I mean, here here is the context. Uh, at least include this context at the very beginning. This is why the why the Talmud actually gets into this. Why the commentary gets into this. It says, in cases of capital law, if one testifies falsely, the blood of the accused Used, and the blood of his offspring that he did not merit to produce are ascribed to the witness's testimony until eternity. Then it explains further how uh, you know Cain kills his brother. The voice of the uh, of your bl brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Therefore, Adam, the first man, was created alone to teach you that with regard to anyone who destroys one soul from the Jewish people, i.e., kills one Jew, the verse ascribes him blame as if he had killed all Jews, and so on. So the context here is uh, quite clear. If you leave the context out of this and just respond to you know the, the the last the last part here it doesn't mean anything and that's not how you should do responses man mm -hmm. and th this by, by the way keep this in mind because this is going to refute another point he he's going to make about what you said here mm -hmm. and so it's basically everything he's saying falls apart just by yeah. reading what's actually said and understanding the real points yeah yeah so let's continue. regard to anyone who destroys one soul from the jewish people in other words who kills one jew the verse ascribes him blame as if he destroyed an entire world as adam was one person from whom the population of an entire world came forth and conversely anyone who sustains one soul from the jewish people the verse ascribes him credit as if he sustained an entire world hmm. <laughs> this cannot be a coincidence the <laughs> That's not cute. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think he can read so much. As important as it is in Judaism, is only a collection of Jewish rabbinic commentary on divine texts and the laws of God. Sanhedrin was an assembly, a court of Jewish rabbis that was established in Jewish lands where rabbis would discuss and judge over the lands of Israel and the laws of Israel. This entire chapter of the Talmud consists of these rabbis making a commentary and ascribing meaning. Uh-oh, typo. This means the whole video is garbage, invalid garbage. Why would we listen to the apostate <laughs> prophet when he can't even spell? <laughs> hey, hey, the apostate. <laughs> this ultra crepidarian. 
<laughs> standing to the text. Hey, look, 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 here you go, here you go, here you go. And furthermore, because Apus, <laughs> because Apus, if you go to the 11 minute mark in this video on this, uh, uh, actually uh, has a misspelling, this, this, this completely destroys everything he's ever said. No one should ever listen to this. That is the reasoning they use, right? That they can find <laughs> yeah. some. some... I did, that's basically what Muhammad Hijab was using against Ayan Hirsi Ali. Mm -hmm. and that's basically how it goes, right? <laughs> this chapter, the Talmud says, whoever kills one Jew had killed the entire world. This is an interpretation by rabbis of the stories of Adam, Cain, and Abel. So the Quran seems to be adopting and mirroring the Talmud here. Muslims don't even accept the Talmud and rabbis as an authority. Yeah, there's no doubt that these words are quite... Yeah! Simple. There's no doubt. Doubt, man. There's no doubt. Similar to what we find in the Quran. However, this doesn't mean that the Quran plagiarizes the commentary. There is reason to believe that the... Hey, is hold on, hold on, pause it, pause it. What? Uh, I'm just... Because... Uh, when, when, I, when I used to teach philosophy, I taught, I, taught, uh, I taught philosophical ethics and I taught philosophy of human nature. But you would occasionally catch a student who's just copying something out of some article or like Wikipedia or something like that. And I could always tell because I, uh, I can spot writing styles, right? And all of a sudden the, the writing style would change and they would start using words that I know we didn't discuss in class. So they, how would they know how to use these uh, philosophical terms and stuff like that? And so I would just, I would just uh, type I would just type the what they're saying into into Google and find out where they got it from, and then I would call them into my office and stuff like that. But imagine, I mean, imagine for read, right? Well, yes, it may be uh, the exact same thing that Wikipedia says, but <laughs> that doesn't mean that it's plagiarism. Well, well, I, I mean, even if it was exactly, even if it was exactly what it was said on Wikipedia, even if someone copied word for word. You could always argue, well, maybe I just said the exact same thing word for word that was said on Wikipedia. But we're talking about like inference to the best explanation here. What, what's most probable? Um, Muhammad in the Quran uh, quotes something as something that God revealed. And when we look at where we find this in the Jewish sources, it's not something from the Torah. Um, it's not even something that's revealed as oral Torah, oral tradition. It's something that a rabbi concludes as an interpretation based on something he's read from the Torah. So he, so someone, a, a mere human being interpreter of the Torah draws this as a conclusion. And then we find the same conclusion in the Muslim sources. Um, and it's in the same exact context that it occurs in, in the Quran. So it's not just uh, so it's not just random. It's clear that the Quran is talking about the same story that we're dealing with in the Talmud. And so what's more likely that Muhammad, I mean, that Muhammad received a revelation, a revelation that actually comes from Allah, which is more likely. We have two hypotheses here. Which one's more likely? That Muhammad received a revelation that it was revealed to the Jews, that if anyone killed a man, it's as if he's killed all mankind. And that you do find the same thing in the Jewish sources, but it's not as any sort of revelation from God. It's an interpretation of a rabbi based on something else. And so what are the odds that this rabbi concluded something randomly from reading something else? And it just so happened that it was also simultaneously revealed as scripture in a lost source, because that was how, that was uh, that was uh, Fareed's theory. Maybe there's a lost source. So this guy concluded in the same context of the same story that the Quran is talking about. And it's just by massive coincidence, uh, <laughs> the Quran revealed something that the Jewish rabbi concluded and was somehow lost before he ever said it. He thought of it again, even though it was at one point revealed by God. Uh, so what's more likely that or Muhammad is once again plagiarizing. But once again, much like Fareed, Muhammad doesn't always understand what he's plagiarizing and therefore, he get he messes up the story a little bit, and he does it, Muhammad, because he's not the most educated fellow in the world. When he hears Jews talking about something, he doesn't always understand the difference between something that's actually from the Torah and something that is a a statement by a rabbi commenting on the Torah. He doesn't know the difference. He just hears the story. So, well, David, obviously, you're not understanding the point here at all, because yeah. when you look at the Quran, you see that the wording is very similar. 
to the wording in the Talmud. And what does that prove? It proves that it that the Talmud took this from a source that's Another much source. older and uh, that this comes from a common source. That's why the wording is so similar. You don't understand anything. <laughs> That is the reasoning, and so there's some there's some common source. But notice, I mean, this no one's claiming, hey, we got this from the the, the Talmud. The, the the rabbis are not claiming, hey, we got this from some source. They're saying that they had a different they had a different view of scripture. It's like when God uses some word or when God repeats something in a certain way, they're actually like you're bordering on like coded messages. It's for for the people who really love the law and who love the Torah. There are these important messages. If you really dig deeply, you can draw them out. And so God says something about bloods crying out. And the, you know, a dedicated rabbi will say blood. Well, it's like you're reading and you're saying, huh, he says bloods instead of blood. I wonder why. Wait a minute. Maybe he's telling me something here. Maybe he's telling me something here. What could he be telling me? And then they'll draw a conclusion out of it. But then, uh, you know, you've got, you've got Muhammad who comes along. Oh, who just hears obviously. now they're saying it. Obviously, that's not what it is. It's a lost source. It's a lost source. It's a common source, man. And what's so funny is how the Quran describes the Jews as people who have taken their rabbis as lords besides Allah. And then the Quran literally plagiarizes a rabbi's words. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, I mean, just think about it. I mean, if you wanted to put together everything in the Quran that is clearly plagiarized from from other sources, I mean, because it, it's not just it's not just Jewish sources or Christian sources. I mean, it's all these it's all these apocryphal Christian stories, and it's and it's all, all things like the Talmud, and then it but then it's all these like just uh, as uh, as that that uh, that ex Muslim in in prison said, uh, it's it's you know Alexander the Great fan fiction that yeah, they're, they're copying yeah. it's just it's yeah. like it's like muhammad's just hearing stuff left and right he doesn't know what the source is and he's just copying and putting it on the quran and then these guys you know all these centuries later are like justifying maybe it's this lost source it's a common source <laughs> it comes from a common source a common source <laughs> in other words the lost authoritative scripture proof of look, look look at the evidence now this can be found in the jerusalem talmud which expresses that whoever caused a single life to perish from... Oh, pause, it, pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it. You see here? Now look, look at the part. Look right before what he quoted, ladies and gentlemen. Right before what he said. Look up, look up towards the top. It doesn't say... This is exactly what I just said, right? It doesn't say... because so, so, matter of fact, go all the way up to the top. The bloods of your brother cry out. And this rabbi points out, it doesn't say the blood of your brother, but rather the bloods of your brother, meaning his blood and the blood of his descendants. Another saying is the bloods of your brother, that his blood that his blood was cast over trees and stones. Therefore, but a single person was created in the world to teach that if any man has caused a single life to perish from Israel, he is deemed by scripture as if he had caused a whole world to perish. And anyone who saves a single soul from Israel, he is deemed by Scripture as if he had saved a whole world. So just David, 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 David it it says by Scripture, and that obviously means that the Scripture says exactly and explicitly this. That's what he would conclude. But I mean, notice that's what that he, he does conclude. Listen, yeah. wait a minute, wait a second, wait, wait, wait a second. Look, he is deemed by Scripture <laughs> as if he had caused a whole world to perish. More importantly, there are several key. <laughs> That's his point here, because it says by scripture, it means yeah. that the scripture literally said that, and, they, and, and, it, the, and the rabbis took that from that scripture. And once again, it's it's. D does he understand what he's reading? The scripture is the bloods of your brother cry out, right? <laughs> and and the rabbi concludes concludes this lesson and by is saying scripture. therefore therefore it's because of scripture. Farid is taking that and say, oh, this must mean that if anyone kills the man, it's as if he's killed all mankind, was in some scripture. Oh, yeah, it was obvious. This is proof that yeah, it was genius, actually man. in a scripture. But that scripture is now lost. And the Quran is quoting that scripture. And this is the proof for that. Wow. <laughs> I mean, oh, it's it just hurts right now once again. This is... <laughs> I, I used to... Uh, follow his videos a little bit because he used to text me back then when he started making videos about me that's nice and, and he was actually very friendly with me in private and was like very hostile in public it's it's very hilarious and but then I, I come across his reasoning and it's stuff like this and i'm just sitting there and i'm like oh 
are you kidding me, man? It's like my 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 brain hurts and I'm laughing to myself and crying at the same time. And then I just thought, I will not respond to these things. I don't even know how to handle these responses. So <laughs> No, and it's just so weird. I mean, I mean, think and and the, the sad part is that his fans will watch this and say, ha ha, AP has been completely refuted when <laughs> there's nothing he's saying here. I mean, at least in the other video, some of what they're saying, I, I can agree with. All right. Like, hey, you have to be careful about saying two different gods based on some different, you know, use of a different name or something like that. I, I can kind of agree with some of what they're saying here. Everything he's saying is completely wrong Complete and shows garbage. like, I mean, like, I, I, I mean, think about it. I mean, he quotes Ibn Kathir and either doesn't understand Ibn, anything that Ibn Kathir says or he's being deceptive. And then he quotes this and he either he either can't read words off of, can't understand words that he's reading or he's being deceptive. And it's like, and this, this is what will be regarded as a decisive refutation in Islam. So, so dear, dear Farid and dear uh, followers of Farid, I want to make this very simple for everyone to understand once more. When this interpretation here that's Farid put on the screen, that Farid himself put on the screen, when this interpretation here interprets the words, the bloods of your brother, and then says he is deemed by scripture as if he had caused the whole world to perish. This rabbi is saying that by scripture, so by the words, the bloods of your brother, it deems the you know the killing of one person to be the same as killing a whole world it does not mean that this is referring to some lost common source in which something like that is explicitly mentioned for it is actually with this text that he put on the screen making our point and presenting proof for my point in the video but he doesn't understand the evidence that he himself gives and thereby thinks he's refuting my point while completely proving it and this is presented by Farid viewers as refutation. I'm supposed to have some respect. I'm supposed to not be so condescending, but how can I? <laughs> yeah, seriously. I mean, I mean, keep it. Keep in mind, like I'm a Christian. I'm supposed to be. I'm, you know, I'm supposed to uh, have good manners and stuff. You're an atheist, man. You could just let loose on him, right? What? Who's gonna? Who's gonna judge you, right? <laughs> this is just horrible. I mean, heavy. Oh my god. World to perish. More importantly, there are several key differences between the Quranic verse and the Talmud. Most importantly, that the Quran is polemical here, refuting the Talmud, which asserts that refuting. killing it is as if one is killing the whole of creation. The Quran uh, goes on to correct this concept by affirming that this is for all man and not exclusive to Jewish victims. Oh, yeah. Uh, stupid point. And once again, shows he didn't read what he's what he's uh, uh, well, he didn't understand anything that he's he's reading. Um if you if you recall if you recall the the greater context so the passage you quoted but by, by the way in, in case anyone missed what he just said right what he said was the uh the talmud is saying that this only applies to jews that this is only applying to jews and the quran is correcting the talmud and saying it applies to all mankind well <laughs> what 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 is that? What is the Quran correcting? The interpretation of a Jewish rabbi? No, the Quran says it's talking about the word of the word of God, something that God revealed. Um, so, what, what exactly are you you correcting here? Uh, but moreover, if you look at the version you quoted, AP, it's talking about it's talking about legal cases, right? Yeah. It's talking about legal cases. Why did Allah reveal this to the Jews for their legal cases to show? to show that if anyone kills a Jew, it's as if he's, he's, he's killed all mankind, right? So they're talking about these are Jewish legal cases, right? But notice the principle, the principle that they're talking about that if you kill one man, it's as if you killed all mankind. Guess what? That's before, that's before there were any children of Israel, right? This is, you're talking about Cain and Abel here. This is before you had any children of Israel. So they're taking the principle, which is if you kill someone, you're killing you're killing all his future generations in addition to just killing the person. That would apply to all mankind. Um, and they admit that. They're applying it to Jewish legal yeah. cases. Namely, if yeah. we're in it, and, and it, it was specifically um, bearing false witness and getting someone killed. If you yeah. were to do that, if, you're bear, if you bear false witness and you get someone killed, 
you didn't just kill that person. You killed all future generations. You are yeah, you are in yeah. all kinds of trouble with the with the Almighty. They're, so they're the, talking about about moral rules about laws within their own community. It's an in group uh, cr criminal law where they are where they are talking about their own community. They're addressing their own community. Uh, we, our community, are Jews. If one Jew kills another Jew, it's as if you had killed all mankind, the yeah. entire world. That's what they are saying. They are not saying that this is uh, something that only uh, you know apply, universally only applies to. Jews. And and by the way, little little side note here. Notice if Allah is being polemical here and he's refuting the interpretation of a rabbi, this must mean that Muhammad and his companions were familiar with the interpretation of the rabbi. So you can't say, oh, he didn't know about this stuff. This means that Muhammad and his companions, they know about this. They already know about this story in the Talmud and Allah is correcting. Well, if... <laughs> If they know about this story um, and it's it's circulating in the area, uh, doesn't that kind of make the case for plagiarism much stronger? I we'll, mean, if we'll, I... We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to yeah. that, too. Look at this. We'll get to it. Look at this. Look at this. So, no, this isn't plagiarism. This is a correction. In any case, Ludvan <laughs> ends his rant with a funny little theory. What seems to have happened here is that Muhammad heard Jews talk about Cain and Abel and about how if one kills one man, it is as if he had killed all mankind. Muhammad probably didn't really understand that this was merely a teaching by Jewish rabbis. Yes, because what Jews love doing most is talking about the Mishnah verses in Arabic in front of an allegedly false prophet. <laughs> the suggestion is ridiculous, since it would imply that the prophet, peace be upon him, memorized a random discussion, then waited several years before including it verbatim with correction. I have to, I'm, I'm sorry, are you completely stupid are you completely dumb this is like some of the how stuff in the world do you come to that conclusion how in the world do you come to that objection you must be completely stupid <laughs> wait as part before, of I, I, before i go into why since surah al-maida is the last revealed chapter Redvan knows well that there were no jews in medina after the year five after hijrah yeah because they were all expelled here <laughs> or killed look this is the dumbest thing that I have heard in this video so far, and we have heard a lot of very dumb things. This is an incredibly stupid objection. I am saying that this is a rule from Jews, and Muhammad possibly heard this, and then included this in the Quran as a revelation from Allah, which was in the past revealed in the Torah right? That's what I'm saying. And he's saying, no, no, that cannot be. Because the first translation of the Talmud only came into existence in 2012. <laughs> yeah, and why would the Jews talk about something from the Talmud? I mean, dude, are you, are you, I don't want to use the words now. But <laughs> Listen, imagine a certain situation. We all know, if we know about the history of Muhammad and the Jews and Medina, what we know is that when Muhammad went to Medina, there were, uh, Arab tribes in charge, and there were some major Jewish tribes and sub-tribes, which were, you know, subjects of different tribes in Medina. They had a very rich presence, the Jews, before they were killed and expelled by the Muslims. And uh, imagine this, Muhammad comes there, establishes laws, they talk to Jews, they interact with Jews the entire time. Something happens, uh, somebody, somebody among the Jews kills another Jew. And Muhammad goes there to figure out what's going on and to settle things in a legal way. And the Jews then uh, say, say to him, well, in our law, um, we believe that if one kills a Jew, it is as if he had killed the entire world. Uh, because this is what our uh, scholars said, and the rabbi can tell us more about this. Dear rabbi, why don't you come and explain this? And the rabbi comes and explains the law, and Muhammad witnesses this. Muhammad then goes and uh, later on includes this as a revelation. This is, an ex this is a very likely situation because Muhammad was, as per the claims of Islam, directly involved with the laws of his Medinan society and the laws of the Jews present there who wanted to establish their own laws but also work within a, uh, with, within a uh, moral framework of uh, the, the ruling Islamic power. He must have heard things about how Jews judge and this is a fundamental part of Jewish law. So, Farid, you dumb idiot, it's not something that you can only hear once the Talmud is translated into Arabic in 2012. It's something that you would hear in the 3rd century, 4th century, 5th century, as long as you have a Jewish presence somewhere nearby. 
Yeah, and uh, Muhammad, there were not there were not only three tribes of Jews in Medina when Muhammad uh, went there, uh, because for, it looks like Farid's position is uh, well, the you know the last tribe of Jews was uh, wiped out, and so the last tribe of Jews was wiped out in 627, and therefore when uh, Surah five is being revealed in 628 and 629. Well, then, you know, there'd be no way of knowing. But but notice, I mean, even even that story, they take they take the women and children as their slaves. So there's a, actually a ton of Jews there. Um, but there were there were converts to Islam. Uh, Abdullah, a very popular Abdullah Ibn Salam was a Jewish convert. And I have to say they got all kinds of stuff from that. There's all kinds of stuff in the Muslim sources that are clearly taken, not from the Torah, but from the Talmud. If you, I mean, you, you'll, you'll remember the, the famous uh, example when the Jews specifically came to Muhammad and said, a matter of fact, this is, this is why uh, Abdullah bin Salam supposedly converted to Islam, but uh, they bring him this issue. So Abdullah brings him this issue and says, uh, there are three things only a prophet would know. So he asks him, um, what the first meal of paradise will be, what the sign will be, and then uh, and then why a child sometimes looks like its mother's family and sometimes looks like its father's family. The answers that Muhammad gives are very, very similar to things that are directly out of the Talmud. Uh, and, and they're things that you clearly got from the Talmud. They were clearly inspired or influenced by the Talmud, not from anything else, because they're you know, they're incorrect. Muhammad's answer is scientifically incorrect. And yet it's something that's found in the Talmud. And so Muhammad's clearly left and right getting, getting stuff from, from Jew, from Jews. He's clearly and indisputably giving stuff, getting stuff from uh, Christians and heretical Christians. He's clearly getting stuff from, from pagans. I mean, it's as clear as day. It can't be any more clear. And yet, I mean, it's, it's just like some, again, it's, it's, it would be like someone copying a Wikipedia article and then just saying, nope, I, what, I just got the, I just came up with the same thing. I just came up with the exact same thing. Weird stuff, man. All right, you're quiet again. Very, very weird stuff. The entire time we we're talking to Farid's beard here, but again, let's, let's so through. perhaps he did this with the hundreds of other verses that speak about early prophets as well. He just happened to bump into Jews that mindlessly recited these works, unaware that. <laughs> We, we already said it. We'd all soon be plagiarized. Come on. All right, I'm done. You like this video? I hope you did. Yell everyone, I'm off. Salam alaikum. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, a, it's an insult to the human intellect, but I mean, guess what? I mean, I can guarantee, I can guarantee his followers will look at that uh, and say, ah, oh, you've destroyed Apus once again. You've destroyed him. And it's like everything he's saying is the stupidest stuff anyone could possibly say. Um, that, wow. That's why I was joking about how this is the the final hope, the superhero, the savior of the Muslim apologists, <laughs> because he's the one. Uh, Sajid Lipham and all the others they're like, "Oh, uh, go and watch for it response." Here he gives answers to all of the things that Ape says. He absolutely destroys him, and here it is. I mean, here we are seeing it. We are looking. We're actually going through the entire footage for it. We're not doing what you are doing and skipping a bunch of stuff. We're actually going through the entire footage, letting everyone listen to what you're saying and then reacting to it. And it is incredibly dumb. And I'm very happy for you due to the fact that you cannot see how dumb you sound. It, it, <laughs> it, it seems their overall strategy is like a, it's just a war of attrition, right? Like if we yeah. just keep posting stuff, you'll eventually get get sick and tired of responding to, to everything. And so that seems to be that someone like Fareed comes along and, you know, you're focused on other people. You're not focused on Fareed. So he can kind of get away with, especially if he has a small channel, if you got like, you know, a small channel at first, um, then he can get away with it for a long time because no one's paying any attention to him. But meanwhile, he wants attention. Oh, I want attention. I want attention. I want attention. When as soon as you actually pay attention to him, you just it's it's obvious how how stupid his arguments are. And that, that's why I, I, I wanted to. Um... I wanted to ignore his stuff for a while. I didn't. Uh, I thought I'm not going to respond. It's just a bunch of nonsense. You're no. supposed to. You got to. You got to wait until the harvest yeah. is is ready. After a point, I thought, hey, you know, since that guy is so popular, and since his responses are so incredibly dumb, what stops me from simply 
responding to this, using him to show to everyone where Islamic apologetics is. And also, I don't know, it, it, feel, it still feels like this is a very low-hanging fruit, and it kind of feels, uh, I feel a little bit bad about this. Yeah, but... it's like, I mean, it's like, you know, saying you're a boxing champion of the world, and you're running around, you know, punching little, you know, random kids on the, you know, on the street. <laughs> right? That's basically what we're doing. David, we are geniuses. We are. We are geniuses. David. <laughs> hey, we should do that. We should only, like, we should, like, for, like, a month, just respond to, like, the dumbest stuff we can find. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! Uh, I really, really going through the streets and punching kids. This is what we do today. This is what this has come to. This is what David has come to, and what apostate prophet the channel has come to. Sad, terrible, terrible, terrible stuff. Okay, I'll make this very quick. David has to go. Mm -hmm. Nathaniel Robinson made a super chat and said, "How is it God didn't tell Muhammad his proper name or how to pronounce Yahweh? Were they not friends?" <laughs> well, he maybe he just didn't bother or he forgot it I don't know. according to me mm -hmm. yeah shannon m said god bless you both thank you please pray for me david i'm struggling in my faith and struggling to believe in god thank you both for everything you do yeah david will pray for you and ap will send you emails saying yes reject god reject god <laughs> That's what I do in my free time. You know, that's what I do. I also, I sometimes I send emails to people. I'm like, yeah, stop believing in God. Yes, or, just believe in the devil. Yeah. Sometimes I go through the night. I'm like, sometimes I'm up at night and I go outside, and my wife doesn't even know where I am. She's like, where are you going at night? And I just wander the, the streets to find uh, people in the night in the middle of the night just to tell them, hey, don't believe in God. That's what I do. Yeah. Grimlock said, "All hail our Lord and Savior." Shrek, may we all enter the great swamp. <laughs> See, we, we are all having a peaceful exchange here. Why do we? Yeah. Some people are troublemakers, man. <laughs> uh, time is fleeting, said. Will the friendly neighborhood philosopher debate Thaddeus of reasoned answers? How can he get in touch with you? Uh, well, uh, I'm I'm going to uh, do something with Thaddeus. I don't know if it would be uh, that debate or or something else, but everything it, it, there's a list, right? Yeah, there's a, yeah. there's a list. You got to work. Like I, I don't know if anyone's noticed, I'm putting out like one to two videos per day every day. Uh, it's because I made myself a pretty uh, a pretty brutal schedule for the uh, for the, the end of March and and for all of April. So. It's 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 not a time where hey Dave why don't you do this it's okay all day every day I'm cranking out videos right now you know all what I mean day, yeah, every so. day. that's good that's good that's I, good no notice I will I will get to it as I said I'll get to it as uh it's not I'm going to get to it right now or or probably any any day in April because again scheduled it was all right been too lazy on videos for a long time just go all out on videos this month. David will also respond to my uh, my debate opening, which I posted. That's on the ago. schedule. That's on the schedule for April. That's on the yeah. schedule. That, that, that our, our debate is is uh, getting back to our debate is on the schedule. So that's getting done. You can look at my schedule. Everything on there will get done. Oh, it'll, that's what, it'll, that's it'll what he done. says right now. We know he's kind of he's scared of oh, responding to me. But... Now it's on the schedule, though. See, that's a problem. It wasn't uh, finishing our debate was not on the schedule before. Now it is written. Once it once it goes down. Oh, yeah, it's getting see. done, son. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, you're gonna see. It's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna end your career. Oh, I'll be humiliated and destroyed. Um, you can change your mug and do uh, AP's tears or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, time is fleeting. Made another super chat. Apollos Christian apologetics said Jesus is an actual Marvel superhero with a rich backstory. Jesus is it? Did I read that correctly? Muhammad Earth six one six is a miraculous prophet of Allah, who is also Yahweh. However, Muhammad's history in MCU is a few lines about his prophethood. <laughs> okay. Uh, Adam Uri said Gesundheit. Oh, danke, danke schön. It's because we said something in German before. Oh, we said Gott. Yeah. Okay. Ja, so Gott, it's Gott. Ja, uh, consider asking Janju or Janju said, consider asking Nehemiah Gordon to uh, do a video with you. He's a Jewish scholar with access to manuscripts and lots of knowledge on God's name. I'll keep that in mind or I'll make a note of it. 
Agape Philia said, uh, nothing, made a super chat. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate it very much. Gohan's Tilipu and may have said Ridwan response. I know the next one will be Farid response to David Wood and Apostate Prophet response to Farid response. And, and they'll, they'll pick out some little random thing that we completely destroyed somewhere else in yeah, the video. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> since none of my followers are actually going to watch them, <laughs> you'll believe what I say. Yeah. I, I This is how I imagine when he has his only a picture of his beard and he speaks like that like he was like and today we have responded and completely refuted david wood apostate prophet <laughs> yeah boys arabian princess made a super chat and said for it is my father's will that everyone who looks to the sun and believes in him shall have eternal life and i will raise him up at the last day jesus christ and i will raise him up at the last day yeah yeah. yeah, this has become a Christian channel at this point. Yep. <laughs> I want to cover my eyes every time y'all say Shema. See? No, he, I think he's actually, he, he's probably confirming our point that, that like, <laughs> yeah, like, like they get nervous around the, yeah, the name yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I had, I had some, I had a, 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 some Jewish people or one Jewish subscriber or something tell me, I wish you didn't pronounce the Shema, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I actually did that. In a, it was it was an interfaith thing uh, years ago. This was at Rutgers University, and it was a, a Christian group. It was the MSA, the Muslim Students Association, and a Jewish group, uh, Hillel, and the Christian group they had was Ratio Christi. But that that's a group that's heavily focused on apologetics and so on. So they're having this interfaith meeting where each each group would explain their comments, uh, uh, would explain their concept of God. And then, uh, and then there would be questions and stuff like that. But uh, <laughs> Ratio Christie contacted me and they're like, Hey, uh, you know, they, they just want to, we know that they're at, that they're, that the, the MSA, which is setting this up wants to act like we're all just going to, you know, get along and have hugs, but we know they will be attacking our view of God. So we want to actually bring someone in. So they brought me in and uh, I just, uh, you know, I just did my normal. I was nicer than normal because I, I I'm, you know, responding, but I actually defended the Christian concept of God and, and used that to, to point out. Uh, I didn't attack the Islamic concept, but I pointed out some some problems for their objections. But in the Q&A afterward, Muslims kept asking questions about Yahweh. And so I kept having to respond talking about Yahweh. And it was, it was pretty clear the the Jewish students were getting a little uncomfortable with Muslims and, and Christians talking uh, talking about Yahweh. What was interesting was after that, the next one, the MSA, uh, the next interfaith thing the MSA uh, set up, they went with a Catholic organization and said Ratio Christi uh, can't be part of their their group anymore because they because mm. they brought the Dizzle in. Oh yeah, yeah, you can't do that. You can't bring in David. <clears throat> XXWLZXX said David David's Farid impression is top notch. That's true. And the mine is better. I'm sorry. Uh, that's why I will not say thank you for the super chat. The squid sauce made a super chat uh, and said, AP, last time you said I would get mod. Why you lie, man? Yeah, you did lie. I'm sorry. I'm a bad liar. I'm a terrible liar. I'm a horrible person. No, you're, uh, the, you're the worst of deceivers. <laughs> Time is fleeting, said. Will David accept the challenge from... Yeah, we already did that. Uh, Daryl Duckworth said, according to Prophet Google, uh, <laughs> peace be PBUI. What does the I stand for? I can't think about that right now. Surah 94 reads, uh, translates, we created man in a liver. What the heck? That's deep. 94 does, does say that. I don't want to look it up right now. I can I can read Arabic. Look, لقد خلقنا الإنسان في كبد كبد. This is very hard to read here, but yeah, I have to look. I have to look into that. Funny, um, funny stuff. Yeah, I see. I see misery. Man created man in trouble. Trouble. Work hard. Toil and struggle. Distress. Toil. Struggle mm -hmm. in an atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to show everyone that I can read Arabic. That was just my main thing here, so that people can finally start following me as uh, a proper authority on Islam, and so that they can confirm that everything I say is true and right. Uh, with that said, thanks everybody for viewing, including Peace Starts on 
your plate who made a super chat and said god bless a peace and dizzle <laughs> is, is that a new thing now yeah maybe that's the re maybe that's the replacement for a plus they're gonna say <laughs> a, a uh god bless a peace and dizzle wow please protect the animals too including dogs from islam i do we're, we're doing it we're doing it to protect the dogs ladies and gentlemen that's why i started this whole channel yeah mm -hmm. yeah absolutely um but thank you i appreciate it i appreciate uh, your contribution to peace starts on your plate and thank you for channel help thank you for helping this channel exist by contributing to this channel with a super chat this way our channel can continue existing and providing you with content which will respond to terrible stuff like farid response yeah okay Everyone remember to watch for read response. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, and we'll be back with more stuff soon next time. Oh no, I wanted to make it a rule to play this before every uh, new for read response response. <laughs> But I also wanted to add F Farid response or something under it, but I, I, didn't, <laughs> yeah. have to, I didn't have time to prepare. Yeah, you got to get that together for next time, man. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. Well, uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. David, is there anything else that you want to uh, get off your chest? Uh, yeah, uh, everyone should convert to Islam. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So you convert can be an ex-Muslim after two years. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Convert to Islam so you can leave soon. And as always, stay away from Islam. Uh, Sajid and messages better. Oh, yeah, I should add that too for live stream. That's pretty good. Sure. Yeah, okay. Well, thanks, everybody. Have a fantastic day and stay away from Islam. TikTok, time to rock.